Hey guys, this is Patrick with Window Tinting Business, and uh, today's video is going to be going over uh, the necessary tools to get started in window tinting. You decided that you want to, to get into this business, and before you can make business cards or schedule appointments or get paid, you need to learn how to tint. Um, and learning how to tint is first step is getting some tools, the necessary tools. Uh, right here is what I got. I, I use this every single day. This is my shop pouch and uh, I'm going to be going over everything that I have in here and what I use on a daily basis and what gets the job done. So first off, to get started, a good pouch. Uh, this one is a Johnson's brand pouch. Um, it's got a number of different pockets and has everywhere to put my stuff in here. And I do like the, uh, the clippable pouches. I've tried the pouches with the draw, the, the tie drawstring, and it's just kind of cumbersome and a little bit of a pain at times. So uh, it, quick and easy just to clip it. It's a lot better for you and self-adjusting. So, all right, dipping in here. <clears throat> First thing I have, I have a Fusion 5 handle, short, uh, with a Blue Max squeegee. Um, I use this mainly uh, for installation purposes on the doors and mostly on the back. Sometimes I'll use just a, a straight uh, yellow turbo squeegee uh, for the doors and smaller windows, uh, but this 100% of the time I'll use this uh, on installing the back window. Um, there is a clear max squeegee. It's white and it's a little bit softer and it may be a good idea to use that one when you're starting off also just because it's a little bit more forgiving. Uh, this blue max squeegee is harder and if the film isn't laying down flat or as flat as you can and you hit a bubble or, or an air pocket when you're install installing, um, you could crease it with this one. So just take your time, be safe and uh, and just take your time during installation. Again, this is a Blue Max squeegee attached to a Fusion 5 handle, one of my favorite handles. I've tried other handles, um, and this one's ergonomically uh, fitting, and I've, had, I've tried other ones where just the metal pieces, like they stab into your hand, and, they, and, and when you do it repetitively, um, it just becomes obnoxious and even physically painful. So this one is a solid one, and I love this one. Okay, next in here, let's talk about blades. Um, two different types of blades that I keep here. Uh, this is a one inch razor. Obviously this is for cleaning windows and um, it's just a standard one inch razor. Uh, you can keep it just like this. I keep it in a blade holder. Um, there's also retractable ones, but I do like these ones just because you can flip a blade in and it locks in place. And then when you need it, you flip it back out and you're good to go. I don't like keeping just random blades without a blade holder. Um, in my pouch because I, I, I shove my hands in there all day long and the last thing I want to do is cut myself. So that's why I always keep it here <clears throat> and blade away. If I'm not using the blade, it's always away. All right. Next I got a, um, this is an NT Red Dot. I think this is a NT Cutter Pro A. Um, it's a red dot. It's an industry standard within tinting. Um, and a lot of people call this an awful knife. It's not an awful knife. It is a red dot knife. And I'll tell you a quick tip here uh, for tinters. There are uh, blades on the market. You have to buy this online. I haven't found a place where you can just buy this straight from a store. Um, but Home Depot and other uh, tool supply stores will sell blades like this. The most important thing you want to see is you see those tiny little ridges right there? Those, um, those let you pop out the blade ever so and just a little bit. There are some other blades that, but unfortunately those ridges are a lot, are gapped a lot bigger. So instead of having one click, you see that that's one click right there. Another click, very small. Um, some of these bigger gapped uh, knives, it's like three clicks. And unfortunately sometimes you just need a little bit of blade and not so much. Um, and that's why I don't like working with those. There are, I think the Walt makes a, makes a, <clears throat> a blade like this that uh, that does have the small teeth that only lets out a little bit and it is self-locking so it's not going to move on you um i haven't tried them yet uh you just want to kind of stay away you see how that that top is rounded off uh that's a good that's designed specifically and intentionally um <clears throat> so that some of them do come to a little bit of a point and um, you can scratch and mar glass that way and stuff like that so you just got to be careful um also in this knife I do have Ulfa blades. This is an Ulfa blade. Uh, this is a stainless steel Ulfa blade, 9mm. It comes with 13 breakaway blades. 
um, and this is what you want to use. If you do buy this online, it does come with blades in it already. Throw them away. Do not use them. They're junk um, and they're horrible blades. Just poor quality. Uh, the blade itself, but the knife is unbelievable and I love it. Um, and for the blades, make sure you get stainless steel. They're in a yellow box. Um, Ulfa makes a carbon steel blade. It's in a black box. Do not get those. Uh, carbon blades are too sharp and too tough for glass, you will mar it if you don't know what you're doing. Some people use them for maybe uh, filing edges with a carbon blade because you do need a, a sharp edge, uh, but I wouldn't suggest it, especially when you're getting started because the last thing you want to do is scratch a piece of glass that you're going to end up having to replace and you're going to end up owing them money versus them paying you. So, blades. Uh, next thing in here, uh, let's go over squeegees. Um, these are yellow turbo squeegees. Um, I use this small one for small quarter windows when, uh, when this one that won't fit. Um, so this is always good to have and it helps get in those small tight places and those small tight uh, quarter windows. Uh, this one is, I believe it's a four inch or about four or five inches. I cut this myself. Um, I like putting a 45 on this side. And I believe this is a 60 degree on this side. Um, and I do that on purpose because this gives me a little bit more reach where this doesn't. But there's some drawbacks. The, the, the longer the angle, the thinner and weaker this end gets, and this is a little stiffer. So it really just depends. Um, but this is what I like to do. Now they sell five inch uh, yellow turbo squeegees um, individually, or you can, buy, you can buy the bar. There's an 18 inch bar that you can get, and you can just, you see that it used to be like that, and you just, you just cut them to size. I like doing it this way better because, uh, because I feel like you save a little bit more money uh, buying it in bulk. Sorry about that. Phones were going off. Uh, I'm here at the shop right now, so uh, when, when business calls, i got to go ahead and put it on pause. Um, but yeah, yellow turbo squeegee. Some people just use these to install windows, um, but it's a little bit harder to just use this to install a back window, uh, but you could get away with it if you wanted to. So there's that. Uh, Next one, we got Lil Chisler, okay? Um, this one's a Johnson's one, Lil Chisler, but Johnson, Lil Chisler. This is one of my favorite, favorite tools in my pouch. Uh, this little guy is hard and stiff, and what, what you use with this one is you help work out. You get, you'll get creases in the sides of your windows sometimes, um, or little bits of contamination, um, and then maybe you don't want to redo the whole window over a tiny, tiny little speck. You can use this to work um, work that 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 piece of contamination get the air out of there so you won't even see it and you can help it can help you lay down um, some film if there's a, a minor crease or, or something like that um, on the edges this tool will save you more time than you can realize because uh, without this tool you wouldn't be able to get it out and then you'd have to redo the window or the back window or whatever window you're working on so this is a really really great tool next I have a, a number of hard cards uh, this is a black Teflon card, a black hard card. I used to use the white ones, but they were too stiff for me. Uh, I mainly use this, obviously, on the outside to shrink, gla uh, shrink film. Um, and this one is a little bit more malleable, as you can see right there. Um, and it, I, I think that this really conforms really good to the back windows, especially when you're shrinking a back window, um, that I think this is going to be more beneficial to you. Uh, I feel like this is just the better option for me. So, black Teflon card. Next one, I have the, what is this, an Easy Reach Ultra, um, and then there's also a Platinum one as well, and then there's just the Easy Reach, not the Ultra, it has like a little hole right here, and I believe it goes to a point, um, but these are really good for helping pull back the gaskets, um, cleaning uh, the gaskets and the sides when you're installing windows, um, and this is a really great tool. Do keep in mind that I, I most likely, most of the time, use this tool um, just on the outside with the, with the protective layer versus the film side because these will scratch your film, okay? So I try not to use this. I know pros that just use these even after installing and, and putting straight, straight on the film and you end up marring and scratching the glass and sometimes you're going to have to redo. I see pros do it all the time and, and it's just uh, not really good practice because your, your work doesn't end up very high so um, so just try to use these uh, when the when the liners on there 
and uh, I only use this one if I have a really, really hard reach and where I'm trying to basically squeegee out water, uh, you can't really see it. it. It's either behind a gasket or underneath or something like that. I try to only use this if I'm using it on the film side uh, very softly and in a place that's not very obvious. Okay. Next, I have a Bondo card. This is a 3M Gold Bondo card and they typically come out looking like this. This one's a little bit shorter because I have a sharpening tool that kind of cleans off the edge when I need it. Um, but this is what they normally look like. I do mine like this because what I do is I just basically cut it down at an angle like that. And this side helps me get into, into the gaskets on the sides and underneath uh, behind the bottom gasket. And it gives me a little bit more reach, and this is safe to use on the film side once the film is installed. This or this. Um, this will not scratch or mar the film, and that's what you want to use. Just make sure you're always keeping them clean and, and not with a sharp, rough edge. So, these are the Bondo cards. And let's see here. <clears throat> Other more important things here. Uh, let's go with a uh, microfiber cloth always have microfiber cloths clean microfiber you don't want to use anything else um, that's going to leave little little dust or, or, or lint particles um, because that'll get into your glass and then that'll end up as contamination in the install uh, some people do use two different colors an outside car and an inside car uh, rag uh, i particularly don't uh, i just keep a clean one um, i usually I usually wipe anything on the inside and then I, I, I use the outside for other things. Um, the most important thing is just keep them clean. If you start seeing like this is a little dirty, this is an older shop rag and they've been washing stuff so some of this stuff is, is clean, it just doesn't look very clean. Um, but if you start seeing your, your, your rag getting dirty or, or maybe you have a window that has a lot of uh, old adhesive or anything of that nature, a lot of dirt or really trashy like older cars that have a lot of dirt in the gaskets. and um, try to keep using clean spots of it, use a corner and then switch it, use a different corner. And then once it's done, just toss it. Uh, I mean, not toss it, but put it in your laundry basket and to wash and don't use that one, just get a fresh one. So, and uh, I got these over at Costco. It was like, I don't know, maybe 15 bucks for like 30 of them. It, it was a pretty good, good thing. Uh, just make sure to tear off the tag. Uh, because the tags actually can scratch if like you're on the paint uh, put like minute scratches in the clear coat for you detail guys you'd understand what I'm talking about uh, also when you first get them I always suggest washing them because I, I, I feel I've seen it where you get new uh, microfiber cloths and just from the manufacturer they have little little bits of, of, um, of the fibers itself that just kind of come off and again you don't want to have any contamination in your installation so uh, just wash them before you use them Next, I have a sprayer. This happens to be a spray master. I believe, I believe we got this online, um, but uh, this is, I believe, a three or four dollar sprayer. Or you can go to Home Depot. They, they have a, a, another sprayer as well that works really great. It's a clear bottle with a yellow and blue trigger, um, and those are about three dollars as well. Those are really, really great uh, sprayers. I really enjoy them. Um, you can get a three gallon or a five gallon pressure tank, but those are going to run you anywhere between uh, right around 375 to, I mean, excuse me, 275 to about $325 just for that. And for when we're just getting started or we're just you're breaking into this and seeing if this is something that we want to do, right, there isn't a need to spend that much or that kind of money on a sprayer that something like this would do well in. So you can just get away with this and you'll be good to go. Um, obviously, I just fill it up with some water and my slip solution. Uh, the other thing you're going to need to get is some Johnson's Baby Shampoo, and you can see it right here. We have a we have it stocked in here. Johnson's Baby Shampoo, um, and fill it up. And we'll talk about a uh, slip solution and and, and uh, uh, ratios in future videos as well. But sprayer, water, and uh, Johnson's Baby Shampoo. Let's see here. <clears throat> Next here is, these tools are not necessary tools. Um, these are just some tools that I keep in my pouch just, just to keep on hand, just to make it a little bit easier. Um, this one is just a small screw set. I got this from AutoZone, I believe. It was like eight or nine dollars. Has a little detachable head here. The most important thing is right there, the Torx 20. It's a star bit right there. I can't, it won't focus, but um, it is a star bit. I'm trying to, there you go. 
and a Torx 20 is the it's 80% of your cars are going to have this type of uh, screw holding up the rearview mirror. Um, so I just keep this in my hand just because I, you know, if I'm going to be doing a sun strip and I want to remove the, the rear view mirror, I'll be able to go ahead and pop it on and off real easily with that. Uh, next is an equalizer. Uh, this is a, a good hard tool to use. I mainly use this if a car's really, really dirty. I, I just wrap a, towel, uh, a microfiber cloth around it and then just kind of use it to clean the sides of the gaskets. Uh, but I also use this to get in between where I'm like removing brake lights for maybe a Nissan Altima. Um, you have to get underneath, uh, underneath it sometimes to pull it and pop it up. Um, and, <clears throat> and if you're using like a, a screwdriver or a flathead screwdriver or some order, other tool like that, it could be damaging to the, to the plastic and the, and the headlight and you'll be able to see it. So I like using this just because it has that, that tip that will let you slide right in and it won't really damage anything. Obviously, if you're not, as long as you're not being a maniac about it, you, know, you won't, it won't be good. So I think this is a really beneficial tool for that. Um, this tool is very handy. Uh, this is a tool sharpening, a sharpening device. Um, like if your Bondo card uh, gets a nick in it because it's been in your in your pouch or something, and it just doesn't feel smooth. Uh, you just take this through there, and what it does is it shaves off just a tiny little bit of the edge. That's why this Bondo card's a little uh, thinner than a normal one because I've shaved it. But you'll get a clean, smooth edge afterwards, and you can use that to. Uh, uh, to apply and use it for window tinting and installations. I've seen some people use sandpaper and rub it here just like sandpaper, but I don't really like that uh, just because um, you get little little grits of, of, of the Bondo card itself and if you maybe you might not clean it very well or um, I feel that uh, I've had it where it just comes back in so I didn't like it. So that's why I just use this because it just slices and dices and then what well, doesn't dice but it just slices a fresh edge and then that way you have a clean smooth edge so this is a really really great tool i've only bought one or two of these i believe um and you just replace um the blade with uh with uh, with an awful blade just it's a, like a two click thing and you just slide it right in so this will last you a lifetime so um that is basically it those are the main tools that you're going to need to get started in window tinting I believe I spent about two hundred dollars the first time I went and purchased tools, but I didn't. If you're really tight on money, um, you can just buy one or two. I ended up buying, I don't know, probably three or four of everything, just because I'm I'm the type of person that like I don't want just one Bondo card. Because what happens if the, if something happens or I lose this Bondo card? What do I do now? I got nothing. And you can't, some of these tools are, are specialty tools that you can basically only purchase online. Um, so if you have to, if you need it right then and there, you're not gonna have it and it's gonna take at least two or three days uh, for shipping to get you a new set. So I always, I'm a very big believer in stocking up as you can see here and, um, and keeping extra tools on hand. I mean, you need to go crazy and get a dozen of them if you want, you can, but um, just enough so that, so that you always have tools on hand because it's not worth it. It's, it's a three or four dollar Bondo card, but it's gonna stop, you know, your hundred and fifty dollar install. You know, that's that's silly. So I bought a little bit extra, and um, just so I had more on hand. Okay, so those are the tools that you're gonna to need to get started and, and start tinting cars, and just to see if this is your industry, and just to see if this is something you enjoy doing. Whether you wanna do it just for friends and family, maybe you wanna do some weekend warrior stuff, or you wanna transition this into your own personal business and, and, and get away from your day job or your everyday job or the grind that you don't really enjoy. Uh, this is an opportunity here for you to do this. Uh, next video, we'll be talking about film. Um, types of film, uh, but more importantly, how to acquire film because tools are useless if you don't have film to put on a car. So I'll be going, uh, in a future video, I'll be going over uh, film manufacturers, some films to stay to, uh, types of film, and then I'm going to even go into how to get free film so that you can get some your hands on some tint and start practicing. I had, I, I, I called manufacturers and ended up getting getting free film. Uh, from them and I was able to save a lot of money because a lot of the times when you're first starting you're gonna waste a lot of film and you know film some films can, can cost you anywhere between 50 cents to 80 cents a square foot for your standard dyed film 
and when you're using 50, 50 square feet, 100 square feet or whatever, you know, continuously using and, and shrinking and, and installing uh, while you're learning, it could get costly. So um, just a little edge off would be some free film, right? So I'll be going over that in a future video. Uh, make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and I really appreciate you guys taking your time in watching this video, and I appreciate you, you all subscribing, and there'll be more future videos to come, and it just will keep on going. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon.